Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be doing the signup form project as part of the Odin project. It's a relatively simple form, looks like this. We have an image over here on the left, the form on the right. There's just only six inputs with some basic validation on them. We used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build this, which allows us to do some pretty cool things. For example, once we start typing into these inputs, the label will transition up here to the top. So as you can see right there, we have some basic validation with this as well. We have to have a NAT signed in the email. Passwords don't match, so let's get those to match. The phone number has to be 10 digits long. And password has to be eight characters long. They have to have at least one uppercase letter. And they also have to have one number. There's a lot more validation we could do with those passwords and with the form in general, but that's all we did. We also set it to reset the page after five seconds so you could test other things. What's really cool about this project is it's relatively easy to implement this or something like this into a website that you're building. Hopefully you guys had fun and were able to learn a few things. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions or need help with anything. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you at the end. Okay, so we'll be creating the signup form project. The first step, set up and planning, set up our HTML and CSS files with some dummy content just to make sure we have everything linked. Set up Git and download this. Our project should look similar to what this looks like right here. Perfect. So if we open up a terminal, let's make our directory. Okay, we have our index file. If we just do exclamation point tab, we can fill that out. And let's call this sign up form. And let's link to our styles as well. Okay, if we open this up in a live server, we should see that right here. There's nothing on it yet. Okay. The design is a large background image, like we saw right there. We need to find an image on Unsplash. We need to change an external font. And we can probably download this as well. And let's save it here. Let's also look for an unsplash photo real quick. Uh, I think we'll use a different one. Okay, I think we'll use this one by Blake Verdorn. Verdorn. Uh, we could probably... Okay, so I just downloaded. We don't know where it downloaded this. So we'll probably just need to move this um, to our repository. Okay, we got our two images. The next step is, I think it's just going to tell us to, yeah, get started. Okay, so there's gonna be quite a bit of things we're gonna do here. There's a couple of ways we could handle the image. Um, yeah, this image. We can, we could put a div or like an image section, like HTML section. Or you could create a div and in CSS add a background with the image. There's pros and cons to both. I think we'll go with the CSS route because um, it'll handle the scaling of the image a lot, bit, a lot easier than the HTML will. So how we can do that is we're gonna want to scaffold out our page a little bit and then um, create a div with that background image. We also wanna choose a font. Me. Let me zoom in on this a little bit as well for everybody. So let's find a Google font that we like. So go you know, Google fonts. And one that I really like is, I think it's called uh, Josephin Sands. No, Josephin Slab. So what's really nice about Google Fonts is we just really have to copy this into our HTML, which we can do right here. And then in our styles.css, if we grab, we could grab a, a few different things like root, but we'll just grab the body and then we just have to copy and paste this. So now any, 
if I put like a div with an h1 of hello, that should have that font, which we see right there. Cool. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, yeah, let's create a, a div with a class of image. And this image, this image is gonna have a few different things like a description. So let's create a class image description. Spelled that wrong. Um, inside of this div, we can have a paragraph tag. Um, we'll do photo by Blake, photo by Blake Verdorn. And then let's also put a link to that image that we downloaded. So we could put an anchor tag and let's grab that URL. Okay, so let's grab this URL, put it right here. However, if we do this, so we don't see a URL right here, so we have to put some text in the anchor tag. Let's also just put that in a paragraph tag with, with the image info. Now let's start applying some of those CSS things that we were mentioning. We're gonna do a couple more things. We're gonna make our prettier file, so dot prettier RC. We're gonna put an empty set of brackets in there. And we're gonna do our reset.css as well. And let's just grab that off the internet. Okay, let's do a width of 100 viewport width. Okay, in order to do a background with like an image, you just have to call, use URL and then we just have to link to that. So it's gonna be assets and then like for Dorn. Let's save that and just look at it real quick. Okay, there it is. As you can see, the um, scaling isn't correct yet though. So let's change the background size to cover and that should scale a lot better um, let's also change this to no repeat and let's center it Okay, uh, I also kind of want there to be some text shadow so we can see the white text along the white waterfall. So uh, I had to Google this one um, and I'll just copy and paste it. Um, CSS styles like this are a little bit tricky um, since they're not inherently built in. But yeah, it's a lot easier to see. Um, let's also just get rid of this purple font that's uh, inherently present in an anchor tag. Uh, the way we can do that is we can just say color inherit inherit and let's do text decoration inherit as well. Now you can see the URL looks like that. If we hold control and click on it it'll open it up in a new tab. Cool. Okay, I think that's pretty much all we're gonna do with the image. Okay, let's do the form next. Um, right now we're actually doing like 50% for the image. Let's do, let's change it to like 60, 40. We save that and look at that. Yeah, it should take up less space. And now we'll do the form in all of this. So let's go back to our index and add a div with a class of form. Let's put a class with form info 
and we'll do an H1 and we'll say, we'll just copy this text right here. Okay, in order to, to in order to do italics, we're actually going to break this up with uh, with an i tag. We could say now to get started. And then we're going to do a break. So let's just do br like that. You once again i know you want to. Okay, if we save that and view it over here, let's do two breaks actually. So br, br. Then let's do the actual form part. And we want first name, last name, email, phone number, password, confirm password, create account, and then if you already have an account. Okay, we got our first input in there, first name. Our label is over here to the right. Uh, there's a few cool things we can do with CSS to make this look a little bit better and like placeholder and label and everything. So let me show you what that's gonna look like right now. So let's go back to our style sheet and we're going to grab our class called dot form label. And we're gonna set the font weight Um, and then we're going to add a transition. Transitions are pretty com complicated in CSS. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into explaining how this works. There's a lot of good documentation out there and there's a lot of really cool things you can do. Uh, this is more on the basic side and I'm probably not using it to its full potential. But we're going to do all 0.5s or seconds. And then we're going to do a transform. Um, translate y. And we're gonna do negative 3.4 REM. So the format put on focus, which means like if you've clicked on it, then it will focus that element. So that's when we want to do a transition of 0 0.2 seconds. Um, let's set the outline to none. And let's set a border two pixels solid. And let's just do blue for now. Last thing we're gonna do is grab the form input. Um, we're gonna do a placeholder shown plus dot form label. We're gonna set the opacity to zero and visibility to hidden. Now we save that. Now you'll notice like it has the placeholder here, but once we type, then the label transitions up here to be visible. We need to set some more styling so that this form input isn't taking up this much width. So let's go above form label right here and let's start editing like our form div as well as our form info. Let's also grab all of the children of form. You do that by doing this uh, greater than sign and then an asterisk or a star.
So we essentially copied that three times and we're just going to change the name of these. Next one we want is going to be email. Okay, we got all the input fields there. Let's also create the button as well as the mock text for if somebody already has an account. Okay, all the CS, all the HTML's done, all the markup. Let's add a little bit more CSS stylings. Let's add like the logo of the other project right up here in the corner. And we'll also have to use some JavaScript to do some form validation on these inputs. We also want all of these inputs to be required as well. So let's just. Okay, I think that's all the CSS. Let's get rid of this placeholder text. I think that's going to look good. Um, let's also just add the, the Odin logo right there. Let's go into our project and let's create a new file called main.js. I also need to link that in our index. So let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Right at the end of all of this, let's go script source is equal to main.js. Okay, in our main.js, we're going to want to, um, we're gonna want to grab all of the elements that we want from our HTML, so let's go 
const email document dot query selector um, so this is going to have an ID so yeah you do a pound sign So email, phone, password, confirm password, those are inputs. So um, let's put those in array. Um, so let's go const input is equal to email, phone, password, confirm password. We could do inputs dot for each item. Uh, we could add an event listener. Um, it's going to be focus in, and we'll fire a function if it gets focused on. Uh, we want to clear the error message if there is one. So error message dot text content is equal to blank, and if it has a, a if it has an error class on it, let's remove that as well. So let's do item dot class list dot remove error. And then if, yeah, if there was an error with a password, we'd want, um, if there was an error message with password or confirmed password, we would need to remove it from the other one as well so we could say if item is equal to password or we could do password dot class list dot remove Typing on these isn't going to do anything. So we don't have any errors yet. But so what we need to do is let's do a function called submit. It's going to take in E, which is just uh, an event. Um, and we want to prevent default. So what will happen with, is with a form when you if you don't def def if you don't prevent the default action, once you submit a form, it will refresh the page. So if we do e dot prevent default, it will prevent the page from being refreshed. Um, we'll just console dot log submit. After we do that, let's grab one more thing. Let's go const form is equal to document dot query selector, and let's grab the form. Let's go form dot add event listener submit and we're going to fire the submit function. So if we inspect oh um this needs to be inside of quotations right here. Uh if we press Create account it won't submit because we don't have anything in here. Okay. So yeah, the submit function is working. Now we just need to put a whole bunch of checks in here to, to make sure that the form was filled out correctly. The first one, let's just do if password does not equal confirm password, then let's do you password dot class list dot add. We'll add the error class and let's also do confirm password dot class list dot add. 
error. And let's say error message.txt content is equal to passwords don't match. We're just going to use double quotations instead of single quotations for this string so that we can put the apostrophe right there. And let's also just return. So we don't want to continue with the function anymore once we run into that run into any error message really. So now we can test this out. Cool, passwords don't match, but if we make a match, and actually if you notice, once we click on one, the error message goes away. We need to do uh, password dot value is equal to confirm password dot value. Cool. Now nothing happened which is good, that means everything's working. Okay, the next check we can put in is, let's just check the phone value to make sure that the phone value is, um, the phone value is correct. This one required me to Google uh, regular expressions or rejects um, to find a good rejects formula to, uh, to use. It's really quite long, so, I'm gonna put the, the expression down in the comments below or in the description. You could also refer to the GitHub repo that I have this in to find um, this re regular expression. Uh, so let's let's just copy it real quick. Okay, so yeah, that form, that phone regex works. What you can also do is like this will be valid, however, this won't be valid. Um, so it will look for like common phone uh, formats, I believe. Okay, the next one we can check is um, HTML does check for like the email address to make sure that the email address looks valid. Um, there's no way to verify an email address is accurate unless you actually send like an email to that address. If an email address has the, the at sign, like it looks, it looks valid to HTML. But yeah, the best way to verify it is to actually email them and have them respond. Um, so we're not gonna do any validation with the name or the last name. Um, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just do validation for the password. So we'll make sure that the password is eight letters long has a number and we can do has an upper and lower case there's a whole bunch of validations we can do but we'll just do yeah let's do eight numbers or eight letters long has to have at least one lowercase has to have at least one uppercase and let's do uh it has to have a number in it as well so let's do if password dot value dot length less than eight So yeah, this one checks to make sure it has one lowercase letter. 
This one checks to make sure it has one uppercase and this one makes sure it has one number in it. Uh, let's go through. And the HTML required prevents us from not putting some stuff in here. The email also will check to make sure we have the at sign. The phone number will make sure that it's a valid phone number. Okay, the passwords don't match, so let's just match the passwords. Phone number needs to be 10 letters, so let's do 454, 544, 4554. Password needs to be eight letters long. Has to have one uppercase letter, let's put that in. Has to have one number. Formatted successfully. And then let's just have it refresh the page after maybe five seconds. So what we can do is do a set timeout. So I'll do two sets of parentheses, an arrow function, and after the arrow function, put 5,000, that stands for 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. And we can do window.location.reload. That, fu that function right there will refresh the page. So now let's try it one more time. Okay, it seems to look good. And if we change our resolution, like the image will scale and the form will scale with it. So I think that turned out pretty well. Hope you guys were able to follow along. If you guys have any questions, yeah, just refer to the Git repo or just send me um, or just put a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought. Hopefully you were able to follow along. I'm excited for the next project and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.